the cryptos, um, if you had to say what the main, is there one main reason why, and by the way, they're still well up from where they were a year ago. Let's do context and, and key here, but off their peaks, is there one thing that sticks out to you, Rich? I'd say it's that Bitcoin, it stands for, for freedom, not only uh, economic freedom, but uh, freedom of speech. And that's something, as we've seen, that China doesn't like. It's an autocratic country. And give, give me a break that they're trying to, to regulate it. Uh, they're trying to ban it. I've seen China try to ban a lot of things, including the Internet. And if you go to China, you can't use a, a, a litany of different technology companies that we use you know, every, every day here in America. And I think it's part of what makes it great here. And I think uh, China's China done it before. You can read headlines that say the exact same thing from 2013. And so, uh, you know, I'm more of a long-term trader, less focused on the details. We are down a lot, but this is frontier technology. You got to be in it and expect it to, to be volatile. Uh, I do think that the big drop uh, knocked a lot of the leverage out of the system. And I think the CDC lifting the mask ordinance on May 13th, probably having an equally big uh, impact in the market as China because people are out there uh, playing sports, going out. They're not in front of their phones as much. So a lot of the day traders are out, but the, the bigger players like uh, GSR, we're, we're still in and believe in it for the long term. And if I wasn't looking at the prices today, I'd, I'd still think we're at all-time highs. Well, you're right about China. I mean, they're basically trying to create their own internet. All the things we use pretty much every day here, almost none of them you can use there as well. And their reports say they're trying to do the same thing, maybe create their own you know, crypto renminbi, I mean, which kind of defeats the purpose of the decentralized nature of a Bitcoin, which they may not be able to ban that, but they can ban banks from sending people money to use to buy cryptos. So they do have some power. Yeah, there's certainly some power. Uh, you know, I think there was some, some talk in 2012 the U.S. government was considering banning Bitcoin and realized they, they couldn't. They could you know, push it offshore and, and limit the use of it. But then it's just going to be more popular in some other areas. So I think it's a strategic move that China is going to make major investments into blockchain technology. They just only want it to be used for the government and, and for the military and you know, for the individuals. It's going to be left more for countries like the U.S. to, to lead the way. I don't want to get too in the weeds, Rich, because I'm not, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not sure I fully understand it, but I'm doing my damnedest to learn. On Ethereum, going from proof of work to proof of stake, POW to POS, and when I first thought, I thought POS standing for something else. And I'm <laughs> trying to understand how this shift that Ethereum is doing to try to change the sort of carbon nature of mining, at least for that. Can you give us, in, a, in layman's terms, what this is and why it may matter in the short term as far as some volatility there? Sure, so I'd say, um, you know, one beautiful thing about this technology is it's always changing. Even Bitcoin itself, um, the technology and the way it's mined is changing. Uh, my company, GSR, in the past few months, we've uh, taken our carbon footprint uh, to, to zero by having half of our mining hydroelectric and we're offsetting the other half and with the goal in a year uh, to be uh, f fully using um, renewable energy. But in terms of Ethereum, the move to proof of stake, this is all about having a decentralized world where you, you need a bunch of different groups called, called nodes that are validating a network. And instead of having that validation be through a proof of work solving essentially a math problem in Bitcoin, uh, proof of stake is just you have to have some uh, Ethereum and do that validation by holding it and putting it onto a network to serve that validation. There's a bunch of other methods, and one other that's getting very popular is Chia. That's more of proof in time and space, and it uses space on a hard drive. But you know, by far the most popular over the past year is Ethereum. You can see it's still up, um, you know, over 100 percent on the year. Um, started the year it's roughly $700. Now it's about you know 1,900. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, I think one of the things that's made it more popular is that it's more energy efficient lately also has smart contracts on like Bitcoin. you can uh, like uh, cr create a pattern that you want to happen yeah. on ethereum and there'll be a code that automatically makes it happen shepherd smith here thanks for watching cnbc on youtube